I just have practical tips for myself and for all of you to how to get to spirituality. It's not going to happen overnight. How do we start having genuine spiritual experiences and really reviving our faith through these genuine spiritual experiences and make them a more common occurrence than they are right now? How do we practically do that? The first bit of advice I have for you is go to sleep early. I know, I'm talking to students. Why would you say such a thing? It doesn't make any sense to us. We don't know what that means. What is this word early of which you speak? <laughs> I haven't heard this before. <laughs> you know, go to sleep early. Because going to sleep early means you'll wake up early. And waking up early means you'll be fresh for Fajr. The first prayer of the morning determines the spiritual health of the rest of your day. If your Fajr is not intact, your entire day is not intact. Forget it. You're going to have a lousy day. You need to start your day with a beautiful, direct conversation with Allah. And Fajr has a specific importance from a spiritual perspective. Not only that Allah Azza wa tells us in the Qur'an, Inna Qur'an al-Fajri kana mashhuda, that the Qur'an recited at Fajr, the Qur'an of Fajr will actually be witnessed, has been witnessed. And it's, ulama have debated and talked about the word mashhud, and how it even suggests that Allah Himself is special witness to you getting up in the morning and praying to Him and talking to Him. But Fajr is a time when most of the world is asleep. So you don't, you're not distracted. Nobody's sending you text messages at Fajr. Nobody's sending you an email. There's nothing to do with your device. It's just you and Allah. Maybe even every, your roommates are asleep. Your friends are asleep. Everybody's asleep. Maybe even the rest of your family is asleep. It's just you and Allah. It's the best time to engage in conversation with Allah. And I'm not saying that tomorrow morning when you wake up for Fajr by Allah's permission, and you're going to pray, it's going to be a spiritual experience. But if you start taking care of your sleep at night, and you wake up fresh, you have better chances. You have better chances. You need to take care of that. And the other, the second bit of advice, not just go to sleep on time, pray Isha as soon as it comes in. I shall say that again. Pray Isha when? You'll say it for me now. As soon as it comes in. Don't wait for it. Oh, it just came in at 7.30. I got time. 9 o'clock, I got time. 10.30, I got time. 11 o'clock, I got time. 12, I got, let me just sleep a little bit. I'll wake up and pray. Extra late Fajr special session. <laughs> right? Extra, extra late Isha. Don't do that to Isha. Pray Isha at its time. And actually, if uh, I, I know that uh, uh, there's going to be a session later on, not by me, but others on, on time management. I'm not going to give you a session on time management, but spiritually speaking, in the, in, in the sense of spirituality, if you can really work on marking down your time for the evening prayer, the Isha prayer, and therefore fixing your Fajr prayer, then you are on the road to spiritual success. You are well on that road. Now, let's talk about Fajr a little bit. What you need to do as students, I mean, I'm not giving you heavy lofty goals, like have khushu' in every word you recite, have full concentration and cry in every word you recite. You're not gonna get there anytime soon, it's okay. It's okay. Just pray Fajr on time, and what right now? Isha, Fajr, Fajr, on time. And for, for brothers, if you can pray in jama'ah, it is so much better for you. It is so, and you will feel the experience, and you'll feel the difference in your day, if you can make it to the masjid for Fajr. You will feel the difference. It'll affect the way you study, it's going to affect the way you carry out your day, you're going to have more, everything you do will have more blessings in it, and you will notice it. There's going to be a positivity to everything you do. It's textured by that Fajr prayer. Now, the thing you want to do little by little, your minds are fresh right now, and I know you don't think so, but you have a lot of free time. You have an insane amount of free time. And if you don't believe me, you will after you graduate and start working. And you will look back and say, man, I had a lot of free time. Now you waste a lot of that time. But I'm saying if you can dedicate some of that time to memorization. Memorization. Now specifically, there's two things I would like you to consider memorizing. One, I want you to start memorizing select surahs from the Qur'an. Just short ones, easy ones to memorize. You can pick ones from Juz Amma, it's okay. If you don't know any surahs, you don't have to tell anybody about that. Just start memorizing little by little by little on your own. Even if it takes you six months to do one page, it's okay. It's you, just between you and Allah, that's it. His, he, you love Him so much, you want to memorize some of what He has to say. That's all this is, right? Now, just as an added resource on, on, uh, on, in my, on my institution's website on bayina.com, there are podcasts for every surah of Juz Amma. 
for the 30th section of the Quran, for every surah, every chapter in there, there's a detailed lecture study of it. Memorize it, then listen to the lecture. And if there are other teachers, other scholars, other videos out there that are describing those surahs, listen to that. Why? Because now what you've memorized, even if you don't know Arabic, if you've memorized it and you've heard a detailed explanation of it, you don't just have a parrot-like relationship with these words, you, you know something about the depth, the wisdom, and the guidance in these words. So you have a real relationship with these words, and that's the, my motivation for putting the podcast up is that, for Juz'amma particularly. Because most people will memorize something from that, at least they have something that they can listen to, and say, okay, that's what this is talking about. Now what happens is when you recite the surah, if you, can, if you can't even concentrate, at least you try to remember what was said about the surah, or something, it's, it's more concentration than you had before. It's more than what you had before. At least now, when you're standing there and praying, and you're looking down at that really creative musalla rug that you bought, you're not wondering about this one going, this t turny thingy going that way, and this one going to three, but this one's four. Why is that? It's asymmetrical. And, you're, you know, and while you're in sajda, you're trying to fix it. You know, and... So, <laughs> at least you're not doing that. So, I say 80% of your memorization efforts should go towards Qur'an, 80%. I'm just throwing a number out there, okay? And 20% of your memorization efforts, here goes, should go towards memorizing special prayers, special du'as. Small book, Fortress of the Muslim, costs five bucks, you can get it pretty much from any Islamic bookstore. Get a, hand, get, a, get a hold of it. There are probably PDFs online anyway of it, if, you, if you're that, you know, the economy is tough for you, then that's fine. So download the PDF. I think there's even apps out there for it now. Memorize the dua for entering the house and leaving the house, putting the clothes on and taking the clothes off, going into the bathroom and coming out of the bathroom. Once, one dua a week. Not even everything in one shot, one dua a week. And add it into your day. Now when you get up, you know what dua, well, how to, what to say to Allah when you wake up. Now when you're about to go to sleep, and, and what's beautiful about those du'as is the meanings are all there. It's translated for you, right? You don't need an in-depth analysis, they're very self-explanatory. And these are, why are these du'as important? Because they are the Prophet's own spiritual practice, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now you're trying to introduce spirituality in your life by adopting the Prophet's own spiritual practices, alayhi salatu wa sallam. And that's why this is a really effective way of you starting to engage with Allah outside of the context of prayer. You sit in the car, you make the dua for travel. And you know, the other really cool thing to do is when you make the dua for travel and you're not familiar with the Arabic language, to even at least remind yourself of what you read in translation. What did that mean? Oh yeah, subhanAllah. And then begin your journey. And then start driving your car. This will necessarily start impacting how conscious you are of Allah on a daily basis. Because what these du'as, you know, they're basically, these are, these are supplications and du'as for all occasions, right? Eating, sleeping, meeting friends, departing, etc, etc. Every, every circumstance in life, there's a prayer for it in Islam. There's a small prayer for it. What that does is, you don't experience anything in life that is not an excuse to remember Allah. That's what that does. It makes every circumstance of life a spiritual opportunity. That's what it does. And that's the beauty of these du'as. So I said first, work on your prayer by memorizing a little bit more of the Qur'an and understanding what you've memorized. And two, little by little, one dua a week, one dua, not more than that, what was the name of the book I mentioned? Fortress of the Muslim, just one dua a week and add it to your regimen. Don't just memorize a dua and not use it. I say one a week because you memorize it, maybe you can pull it off in a day. The rest of the six days, you make it a point to use it. To actually use it. You don't have to memorize every dua in that book. Pick the ones you like. It's okay, you can be selective. Pick the ones you like. Like if you don't ever go to the masjid, don't, memorize, don't start with memorizing the dua for going into the masjid. Don't start with that. Start with the one you're going to use. You know? Yeah, and if you find a section there, you know, selling a camel or something, and don't, don't do that yet. You're a, you're a couple of months away from selling camels. So just don't worry about that yet. Okay? So... <laughs> So this, that, that's what I'm trying to say as far as spirit, practical spiritual practices are concerned. Now, I'll leave you with this thought. I mean, I, I really just want to give you little that you can accomplish. And I tell you, as they say in Arabic, the first of the rain is a drop and then it pours. These little, little things, they add up to a lot. Don't underestimate their value. Don't think, how am I going to become the spiritual warrior? <laughs> Don't worry about it, you'll get there. 
you have to you have to get your training with little small small steps, baby steps, and inshallah ta'ala you will get there. 